Welcome everybody down here to the uh, LSU locker room. Jacob Hester, Gordy Rush, Tigers with a big win. Uh, and I'll start with you, Gordy. This was a dominant performance from beginning to end. It really was, both sides of the football. I thought that uh, Steve Ensminger did an excellent job offensively mixing it up. Uh, kept his pedal down for the majority uh, of the football game. And you think about it, 45 points, and LSU turned the ball over twice going into the red zone. They had opportunities there. So uh, all in all, good football game and uh, a step in the right direction. They uh, did a little bit of everything. I mean, LSU threw the ball for almost 300 yards, was able to run it when they needed to to eat up clock. And then the defense, uh, bend but not break. Yeah, I thought they were really balanced on offense. You mentioned it. I mean, they were right there, 250 rushing, almost 300 passing. And then the defense really did a great job on Ole Miss's high-powered offense. You're right. They gave up some yards, but they kept them out of the end zone for the most part, made them settle for field goals. It was the difference in the game. Joe Burrow finally had one of those stat sheet games. You know, he's been really good throughout the year, but he finally had the big numbers, almost threw for 300 yards, three touchdowns. Uh, looked impressive. He did, and look, let's be, be honest, Ole Miss is the worst defense in this conference. They, they gave up 600 yards to, to Southern Illinois, right? But what Joe Burrow was able to do, he was able to read what was going on at the line of scrimmage. When Ole Miss came up to play run, he threw the football and exploited man-to-man -man coverage, and when they tried to play him honest and play back, they ran the football. Uh, I thought he did a really nice job, and again, this team rolling offensively going into the swamp next week. What did you see, Jacob, from this team that, it, that they improved on from last week's uh, little mini scare against Louisiana Tech? I thought they made first downs when they had the opportunity. They converted those third down opportunities. Uh, they killed Ole Miss in, in the first down battle in this football game. A lot of people would have had that the other way. Ole Miss picked up a bunch of first downs, so I thought Joe Burrow was great. One thing about this LSU offense, you can't just marquee one receiver. You have to cover a bunch of guys. It could be Jefferson. It could be Sullivan. We saw Terrence Marshall with a big play. They continue to get the ball to a number of different guys, and it's really been impressive. It's going to help them later on down the year. Coming into this game, there were a lot of questions, I guess, about the offensive line, yeah. right? They were banged up a little bit. What did you see today? Well, they played a lot of people, and they played pretty well. You know, albeit, again, Ole Miss is not a great defense, but when you think about it, they came out tonight. Adrian McGee came back and played left tackle. He started at right tackle against Miami. Uh, out of nowhere, Donovan Campbell tweets out that I'm starting today. <laughs> he plays at left guard. Uh, and halfway through the game, or halfway through the first half, they took both of those guys out and put Traore in, and Chase and Hines played a little bit. We got to see Cole Smith that played a little bit at center. Sadiq Charles dressed out tonight. They, they didn't feel like they needed it, and they'll rest him, so he becomes an option next week at Florida. Slowly but surely, this offensive line's getting healthier, and I'm told Garrett Brumfield may be Mississippi State, if not Alabama, with that sprained knee he's got. What did you see from the running backs? I'm seeing Edwards, Hilaire, and Bursette. We're really seeing a true mix from them the last two games. Uh, and we talked about them on LSU Game Day Live. They're really complementary of each other. Nick Bursette's patience has been unbelievable, waiting until something comes open, and then he hits it and has positive yardage. And then Clyde, you can tell, he's the quick back. He's the jack of all trades. He's the change of pace guy. And those two guys right now are doing things different, but it's becoming really good, co cohesive kind of thing for the LSU running backs. It's been fun to watch, and they continue to get better and look for all the naysayers that said we didn't have a running back at LSU those two guys are proving a lot of people wrong what well, gets your take Gordy on a special night that this was the 1958 national championship team was being honored the statue for Billy Cannon was uh, unveiled yesterday uh, pretty neat to see you know Max Fugler and all those Hall of Famers out there on the field it, it really was special I was blessed enough to, to get asked to MC the the function last night the, the dedication and the unveiling of the, uh, the the statue and to see all these guys come in and wear their uniforms and to have their families and kids and grandkids and just generations come in was fantastic. And then there were so many VIPs. Bob Pettit was there. Fred Bolitnikoff, the great Oakland Raider, came to, to come see his former teammate be honored. It really was a, a special evening. Well done by LSU. Yes, yeah, 60th anniversary of the 19th. That'll be you one day. Uh, I don't, yeah, I, I got a long way to go. I still got 49 more years. We'll see if I can get there. All right, Gordy Rush, Jacob Hester from the LSU Victorious Locker Room. Let's go back to the studio.